Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another session from CoinGubber. And today we are joined by Crad D2C team. And uh, let me put everybody uh, in the ecosystem. So here, everybody is here from Crad D2C team. They are rather a very interesting project. And we are joined by Dr. Samsudin. He is actually the CEO and founder of the project. Mr. Charles, who also looks after the project. Mr. Amir, who is an intellect lawyer, takes after, I mean, takes Hello. care of the aspects of the project. Professor Christian, he deals with the use cases of the project and Ms. Jacobs. So this is the team uh, from Grad UTC, quite a long team. And that shows the legacy of the project, what the project is going to be like. And that is what we expect our discussion to be, because that is how the project works. So when the team is good, when the thought process is good, the project definitely has to be good. Let us start by asking uh, Dr. Samsudin, uh, exactly led you to the crypto ecosystem if we talk about. I mean, we all have come from different backgrounds. I come from the accountancy and auditing background in the financial and forensic audit side, but now into crypto. What led you to the crypto ecosystem? Thank you so much, uh, the founder of uh, CoinGaba co-founder. And as a pleasure to be having you guys here this wonderful uh, morning from this part of the world. Uh, credit to see decentralized autonomous smart chain uh, we started this vision far back 2019. But as a founder and CEO of this wonderful uh, project, I have been in the financial market since 2000. And seven, 16 years I've spent in the financial market. We're talking about stock. I uh, started that in 2010, talking about the forest. Avenue in. Is it mine and the work, or is it Dr. Sammy's? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was opportunity to work with the founder uh, of Ethereum uh, in 2016, uh, work for one of his DAO in Africa, DAO project uh, on bid on Ethereum. And then we see the split of Ethereum to Ethereum Classic in the June, July, August of 2016. And that's been my journey ever since in the crypto space. But it has been evolving. And in two, 2019, uh, during the COVID period, uh, when we have the pandemic, when we have multinational company laying off their staffs, you know, shutting down their operations, and we see manufacturer, you know, connecting directly with end user at home. Uh... Ah, he's gone again. Yeah, I think we've lost him again. Yeah, he's gone again. Well, no worries. Let, let me come to uh, Charles for that matter. So, Charles, what exactly do you feel about... That was a vision. That was actually how the, the, the bet of, of credit to see. Dr. Sami, your so Charles, if, if you come to you quickly and uh, ask about your opinion as to what exactly do you think uh, the Bitcoin ETF approval has done to the industry? Because this is a pertinent question. And this is a burning topic these days. What do you feel and how do you feel this is going to affect the future of the Web3 and crypto industry? Well, I don't know if um, I'm able to, to give this answer because normally it's Dr. Sami who will answer those questions. But uh, certainly, I think uh, it will be uh, certainly a benefit for all projects in, in, in the crypto space and certainly for Credit to see who has now been uh, since uh, to, I've been in, in this project now, I think, for over two years. And I will give you a short, um, brief um, background uh, check of myself. So I've been over now, I think, uh, think four or five years in crypto. And um, my background is, uh, of course, more in um, communication and also been in sales. And I've been introduced to Dr. Sammy in this project now two years ago. And regarding what uh, the ETF uh, approval for Bitcoin is that I think it will certainly have a 
good impact for all projects in crypto space and certainly ours. But I don't know if Dr. Sammy wished to add something regarding this. I think uh, he's the CEO and the founder and he has the more the experience and the knowledge and he will give you certainly the, the approval um, response on that. So Dr. Sammy, I give the back uh, the word back to you because your network yeah, is back yeah, is good. So. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, the, the Bitcoin ETF will be able to do uh, much advantage to the crypto industry, to the crypto space. Uh, majority of the reason why uh, we have issue in this industry is because of the use cases of cryptocurrency, why institutions are fighting crypto and government fighting crypto is because of the limit level, limitless of the use cases. But uh, right now with the Bitcoin ETF, we can see institutions joining the space, we can see governments joining the space, and that's going to open more innovation for the industry. And with credit to see having four unique use cases, the real estate, the e-commerce, uh, luxury lifestyle, and the payment system, uh, we see we have so much niche uh, in, within our ecosystem, which is actually the primary uh, hubs of the new phenomenon of the Bitcoin ETF, uh, you know, joining manufacturers to... Yeah. Nigeria, that's Nigeria. Mm, it's a challenge. <laughs> uh, utilizing the use space, use cases of uh, the cryptocurrency. <laughs> okay. I think we are losing him again. Anyways, so uh, if I if I talk to Ahmed, you are looking after the legal side of the project. And you're also dealing with uh, other things included in the project, a lot of things. So what exactly do you perceive is going to be the legal future? I mean, ETF has just been approved. Other countries are thinking of it. You are, I think, based out of uh, Gulf somewhere. So you are well aware that the VARA guidelines are already out in Dubai and people are actually looking forward to a well-rounded regulatory environment. And that is that is going to be the future. So how how is your perception about the industry of crypto, especially in terms of the legal aspects? Ahmed, you're, you're, on uh, you're unmuted. Uh, you, you have to unmute. Hello, can you yeah. hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Please. So uh, hi everyone. My name is Amir. Um, sorry for my voice. I'm kind of sick, but. Uh, Nevertheless, for your question, uh, I'm going to answer like that. So I'm from Intellect Lawyer team. We are engaged in uh, copyright protection uh, and the valuation of Crad D2C um, whole ecosystem as a company. So we are legal team in terms of copyright protection and valuation. That is the... Mm -hmm. The thing what our company and uh, ourselves with my colleague Dimitri do uh, regarding the project, regarding the company itself. So okay. we are not engaged only in crypto um, space. We are company oriented in uh, every single, like, uh, can you hear me well? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Because well. some of you just disappeared, the cameras of all. No, no, it was it was because I put you on the main stage so that only you are visible while you're speaking. So that, okay, that is okay. the thing I did. Okay. So Professor okay. Christian, uh, if I ask you specifically about the use cases of CRAD D2C, because CRAD D2C has been creating some buzz in the market. And uh, I mean, we also did a video at CoinGubber explaining about the features of CRAD D2C and things like that. But our listeners would like to, uh, I mean, have things in detail as to how exactly is Crad D2C working and what is the proper use case that you are looking for? Okay, you are, you are asking question to me? Yes, yes, we are able to yes. listen to you. Now, the point is about this for me important is I'm um, responsible of our working more on the department of luxury lifestyle. This meaning that we bring different departments in our branch in Crad D2C and the department that are going to handle is luxury lifestyle. What is luxury lifestyle? That you can go do traveling, restaurants, eat, and all the things on a lot of discount of the original price. If you normally go make a booking and you pay um, to an hotel, a five-star hotel, 
we make agreements with the traveling industry um, that you can travel from 20 to 50 percent discount of the price of the hotels and you can pay it then also with craft d2c and this is one of the things what we go handling it is not only for the hotels but also for restaurants if you go eat there and other projects what you go try to bring inside my i go handle this department of the luxury lifestyle this is also goods what can come inside luxury goods and other things what can pay with craft key to see Um, your speaker is closed. Your microphone is closed. Um, so. Sorry, sorry. Bye bye. So I'll come back once again to Dr. Sammy and we'll ask him about what exactly is the purpose or what exactly was the thought process when you came up with Pratt D2C, the idea of Pratt D2C as a project and how were you actually like thinking about proceeding with it? Because uh, I mean, I feel that, that the thought process and the vision behind the founder is the most important thing that drives the project. And that is what we would like to listen from you. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier on, the, the use case of credit to see is uh, our uniqueness. And uh, this concept of credit to see has been a dream uh, since 2019. As I mentioned earlier on, during the COVID period, during the pandemic, uh, you can see what happened to eBay, Amazon, Alibaba during 2019. Market capitalization was shooting up. Um, the, now we can even see a company called Zoom, you know, market cap still almost remains the same even after the uh, post-COVID. Well, uh, Dr. Sami is, uh, is uh, disconnected again. Can you uh, let Mr. Said in? Sorry? Mr. Said is in the waiting room. Yeah, can you please also add Dimitri? I'm already in. in. I'm already in. Hello, everyone. I'm already in. Yes. Hello. Yeah, thank Hello, you. Everyone. So rest of the things kept apart. I mean, uh, what I can understand is, uh, I think we lost you in between, Dr. Sammy. Could you please just uh, come again with the whole vision thing and how the process of this went? Because we were able to listen to you till the time when uh, you said that 2019, the COVID scenario, you started conceptualizing this uh, project. Yeah. Uh, 2019, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, was actually the birth of uh, credit to see connecting manufacturer directly with end user, uh, removing the, the bureaucracy of retailer in the e-commerce space. Uh, we can see multiple tax add-on uh, from manufacturer going to the retailer in the middle at times you can have retailer one retailer two retailer three going down to the end user so, so credit to see is a vision in looking at uh, connecting manufacturer directly with end user in the uh, e-commerce space in the real estate states in the luxury lifestyle states and um, payment system as well uh, we have our credit to see e-commerce portal that can connect manufacturer directly uh, with end user. Uh, we also have the credit to see real estate trading portal. Rectors can be able to sell their properties directly to end user uh, using our own native coin as a means of completing transaction on that portal. We also have the craft luxury lifestyle, which Professor Christian mentioned earlier on, whereby you can get up to 70% discount for hotel, restaurant, bar, cruise, holiday mentioned. Uh, on our portal, uh, just similar to booking.com, and you'll be able to actually use our own native coin as means of completing transaction on our portals. We have four niches, four major portals, real estate, uh, e-commerce, luxury lifestyle, and the payment system. On the payment system, you can be able to actually domicile your native coin, credit to see blockchain native coin on a debit card and you can use this card on atm machine on a vending machine pos machine hyper mall super mall shopping center globally so these are four use cases of credit to see and we believe we will be a major credit to see is the biggest project for 2024 there's no doubt about that uh, because the use cases uh has been there we've already signed 31 years deal in uae uh, for a luxury lifestyle portal. So that portal will be going live last quarter of 2024. We also have uh, our uh, payment system going live last quarter of 2024 as well. 
So we might not be able to actually complete all our roadmap in 2024 because we are launching the blockchain on June, July of this year. The next month after that, June, July, by uh, ending of July, we'll be able to actually list uh, credit to signative coin on centralized exchange. But on the last quarter of 2024, we're looking at, you know, uh, uh, releasing out, you know, launching out two major portals, which is actually the Crat Luxury Lifestyle and the payment system, and which can actually be a game changer in the crypto space. So, I mean, it would not be wrong to say that you are not Amazon or eBay. You are basically an Alibaba who is supplying to Amazon and eBay. Right. <laughs> I mean, okay. That's what you need to add here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can cut me that way. Uh, uh, because uh, let me be frank with you, I've been to this space since 2016. Uh, I've, I've seen finger bond severally. I see projects being uh, established and in three, six months, they get disappeared and uh, investors lost their fund. I, I've been looking, why are we having this in this industry? What's missing in, in this industry? So if you are talking, when you talk about the traditional market or traditional finance, centralized finance and decentralized finance. We need to understand that the world now is going to the decentralized finance, but we need to create a lot of use cases in this decentralized financing of this world. And those use cases, I believe blockchain uh, can actually solve that major uh, uh, issue. Uh, with now we are introducing artificial intelligence. So if you look at Web3 blockchain, Artificial intelligence happening at the same time, the next year is actually going to be very uh, flourishing for major innovators globally. Yeah, because that that's what my thought process and perception has been with the industry because eventually blockchain is not Web3, but blockchain is a data storage mechanism with the distributed ledger technique. So AI, since you are having so much of data, the piles of data working on it, so there is there's a huge uh, inclusion of AI that is required in the times to come because right now we are only talking about the transaction and transaction speed. But later yeah. on, very soon, we'll be talking about consumer behavior or the user behavior on the blockchain. And that yeah. is actually going to change the whole scenario when we integrate it with the artificial intelligence ecosystems. So there, there are a lot of things. In fact, we are we at CoinGabar are also working on an AI based product mechanism uh, of the crypto assets movement so that is one thing but that is a discussion for another day now i would like to call somebody i mean whosoever can answer the thing best uh, from your team that what exactly i mean when we talk about uh, cried d2c what exactly are you looking forward to so you gave me a beautiful vision of how the project is going to be like and what are the use cases you're working on but if we talk about the, the I mean, my favorite use case would be the payment uh, ecosystem. So if somebody from your team can detail more about it, because that is where I feel the linkage between Web 2 and Web 3 world is happening. If you're talking about the payment ecosystem, if you're talking about the transaction, that is where the Web 3 and Web 2 are converging. And that is the most important question to be addressed as on day. So, I mean, whosoever is there to answer this, I'll be more than happy to listen. That's Dr. Sammy's uh, category. <laughs> and Dr. Sammy, go for it. <laughs> Dr. Sammy, that's yeah. his vision. That's his vision. Yeah, that, that's his. That he's a superman. He's handling everything himself. He's bought bowling, batting, fielding, everything himself. <laughs> yeah, you, you mentioned it Web 2, Web 3. Uh, you know, the, the word of the Web 2, we're talking about uh, Alibaba, eBay, Amazon. These are web through applications that are you know trying to inculcate web three application in their own ecosystem as well. But I believe uh institutions need to do a lot in this regard. Innovators in our field in the blockchain space also need to do a lot. There have to be synergy because we can't do it alone without the support of institutions, without the support of government uh uh institution around the globe. Uh but when we are able to actually treat the use cases, you know, one major thing credit to see is about is the use cases. If you look at our blockchain, our blockchain is having a eight layer zigzag supply mechanism till 2039. I mean, the blockchain releasing its own native coin once every two years is because we look at the future, we look at the use cases, you know, 
how we can integrate multiple industries like the e-commerce industry like the real estate industry like the tourism industry like the payment system industry i mentioned something earlier on talking about domicile uh native point of credit to see on a debit card and you can use it on an atm machine on a vending machine hyper mall super mall shopping center i do not need to carry cash along uh you know they so that's actually integration of web 2 going to web 3 so Web3 will be hunting to get more use cases. Uh, but Web2, that's more majorly being controlled by institutions, uh, need to be ready. It needs to be ready to actually allow Web3 to be its, pa uh, its partner. Because without that, when there's no synergy between migrating from Web2 to Web3, uh, there may not actually be anything successful in what we're doing right now. So what we believe by the time we're able to actually to correlate the use cases, these will change the norms of institutions. It will change the norms of government functionaries globally. And you can see more innovators coming to the space. Well, Web2, I mean, that's, that's where you are absolutely right. That Web2 is not something you can just step up from Web2 to Web3. There has to be Web. I mean, what we are seeing right now is maybe Web2.25 or uh, Web2.5. The extreme projects are Web 2.5. Web 3 is still a far off dream in most yeah. of the circumstances, especially with the uh, regulatory mechanism. If we talk about the regulation has not been quite uh, understanding and they are more reliant on the currency and currency valuation mechanism rather than a, web, a complete Web 3 ecosystem where the token drives the value, value addition or you can say the store of value. So these are two different things we can talk about. Uh, but uh, one thing is for certain that people are accepting more of, uh, I mean, less of institutions and they are talking about more of the uh, decentralization because majority of the cut in the institutionalized uh, business ecosystem or capitalistic ecosystem goes to the institution and the public or the creator end up having nothing or even the producer end up having nothing. And that is where Web3 can come forward with the biggest of surprises for the institutionalized uh, monopoly or institutionalized dominance. Cat yeah. Uh, uh, we would like to understand what is your role in the project and how are you, uh, your visions about the project and how do you feel uh, Cred D2C making an impact in the times to come? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, community. Um, it's wonderful to be here with you all today. Well, let me uh, quickly introduce myself. I followed um, the crypto world since 2015. Um, I'm intrigued by it from the start. Um, my job is a coach. Yeah. So what I do in this project is I gathered the team for a, a big part. And then I keep Dr. Sammy on his toes because I'm in the real world. Yeah. Challenge, uh, solving the, the, the problems there, the ch big challenges, what people have in their real world. And then I follow the crypto world. So I combine these two. So how can we implement this monster? I call crap D2C the monster. Uh, how can we implement it in the best way so it can be um, approached by everybody? Yeah, because crypto is like still far away from the, the common people. Yeah. And that is my goal to um, that everybody has access in an easy way uh, to the crypto world. Even the people who are not so crypto savvy, um, that they you know you know that there's a, a door that they can use it that they uh, implement it in their daily lives, and that's the the challenge. So I'm the one who asks the difficult questions and keep Dr. Savvy on his toes. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll be right. of his chair. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great catch because, I mean, people have been, uh, a lot of people I ask, what exactly is crypto? And the answer is, we don't understand crypto. Voila. But the basic thing is that even with the banking ecosystem, even with any ecosystem for that matter you talk about, crypto is not making any difference at the user level. The user is going to be the same, have the same experience even if it is an operation is done in the Web3 ecosystem, it is just the background working and the institutionalization that changes True. rather than anything that comes with the user. But the users are made scared of crypto yes. because 
Yeah. And it's it also people are scared of new. And this seems like, you know, if you see a bank account, you see a number, uh, well, a bank account address, you see all these numbers. But with crypto, it's like, oh, it's not only numbers. Oh, it's scary. You know, and people have to overcome that. But that will come. I see a lot of integration of crypto in, in the in the world, uh, you know, the common world, you know, I call it the, 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 mo the normal world. Yeah. But I see a lot of people are being interested, especially now when Bitcoin is doing a good again. Everybody's like, what is this? What is this going on? What is what is it uh, all about? So I get much more reactions, positive reactions. Instead, before it was like, oh, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Do you trust it? I don't trust it. But now people are, what is this all about? And tell me more about it. So, yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. I, I must say we need more people like you, Kat, because that is that is where the difference will be there. A smooth transition from the Web2 mentality to the Web3 mentality or the yes. Web2 mindset to the Web3 mindset is, is the need of the R. And that is where more people like you who have, I mean, who have thoroughly been into the Web2 ecosystem and who are in shift of mindset from Web2 to Web3 are needed. And that, I mean, we are happy to have you here on board and so must be the Pratt D2C team to, to have you on board. They must be happy. <laughs> that's great. That's great. And so, they're not I mean, awake yet. <laughs> so again, again, my question would go to something uh, related to Pratt D2C. And I would ask as to when you were talking about that you will be implementing the blockchain very soon. So what, what exactly is the ecosystem what exactly is the kind of blockchain you're talking about and what exactly i mean what is it a layer one solution a layer two solution and how are you going about the technical aspects of the same because i have always been intrigued about the fact that there's a lot technical behind it i mean myself being an accounting and finance guy so i i have not understood the technicality especially with the development and coding part so uh, anybody who wants to take the stage and can explain about the technical details of what this blockchain is going to look like and how is it going to be different from the existing solutions that we have. OK, I think I'm going to take that, but I'm praying that my network will actually <laughs> let me do be able to do this. Now, Cradi to see decentralized autonomous smart chain uh, is a DPoS uh, blockchain that will be launching by June, July this year. We'll be launching the mainnet by June, July this year. Uh, if you know very well that we have different, several types of blockchain. We have the proof of work. We have proof of stake. Uh, we have proof of authority. And now we have uh, the, the new kid on the block, uh, delegated proof of stake. Uh, we know Solana uh, being there, POS, uh, that actually introduced itself to the echo space uh late 20 2020 and uh, we see solana actually jumping from 80 cents a listing price listing value 80 cents to 258 dollars in one year interval uh, a lot of people are trying to go away from the conjunction of the network of a proof of work and also the gas fee and that's actually another area that credit to see decentralized autonomous matching is correcting at this particular moment so but we have four players in, in our majority of the DPS globally is two player. We're talking about the delegator or the validator. Credit to see decentralized autonomous matching have four players. One, the validator that validates transaction on our blockchain, the delegator that votes and delegates who is the validator. Of course, we are going to have limited uh, validators on our blockchain, around 101 validators. So if you're interested to actually buy the nodes of our validation, this is the best opportunity. We are at the pre-ICO right now. And this is the best time you can get our nodes at about roughly about 18 cents for the native coin at this particular moment of the pre-ICO. So the aside the validator and the delegator voting to pick a validator on our ecosystem, we now have uh revolutionize what we call about two other players i mean new uh intake of two other players we're talking about the uh light backer we're talking about the tubo backer you know so aside you having two players in the deepest dpos mechanism 
which is actually the validator and the delegator, we in the credit to see Ecospace also have what we call a light backer and the tubo backer. So a light backer is just like a backer, you know, a financier of an ecosystem, ensuring that uh, there's no much uh, dumping in the ecosystem. So for you to be a, a light backer, you need to have 200,000 credit to see native coin, you know, staked in, in the uh, staking pool of credit to see, and you have bigger uh, APR of, uh, of the vesting uh, reward. Why the Tubo backer, uh, by the name Tubo, uh, have 300,000 credit to see native coin? You need to be able to stake 300,000 credit to see native coin in, in the staking pool. Of course, you know, validator as well need to stake to be a validator. And for you to be a, a delegator, you also need to stake a, a specific uh, portion of the native coin. A delegator stake 1,000 native coin in the ecosystem to, to vote, to pick who is the validator. A validator needs to actually stake 100,000 in the ecosystem to validate transaction, to ensure there's transparency in our ecosystem. And you also have two other guide players backing them up, like Baka and Tubo Baka. So if you have these four players staking in the ecosystem, in a deep way system that's minting out coin once in two years, of course, they will not be dumping in the market, of course. And we'll be able to actually have uh, you know, a good uniqueness. Remember that credit to see is a utility coin. And when you talk about we need to complete transaction on our four major portal the real estate portal the e the tourism lifestyle portal and the payment system you need credit to see native coin to complete transaction on those four portals now when everyone need to use credit to see native coin to complete transaction and we also have the four players you know staking their own native coin in the pools there will be serious scarcity in the market at that particular time so if Solana can lease for 70, 80 cents and shoot to $258 in one year, credit to see can do far better. Uh, what we're targeting to be the top 50 on CNC before the year end, but I believe with our niche and what we are creating, a eight layer zigzag supply mechanism of a blockchain, minting its coin once in two years, 2024, 2025, we only have 10% that will be minted out uh, in the ecosystem of credit to see. So we're talking about 2026 and 2027, 4% only will be minted out in the ecosystem. 10%, 2024, 2025, 4%, 2026, 2027, you're creating more scarcity. It's gonna be really, really tough for you to be able to get native coin to complete transaction on our portals. Remember that our portal is even giving 70% disc, uh, discount, up to 70% discount for luxury lifestyle. So all this niche we have in our ecosystem is the use cases of credit to see decentralized autonomous smart chain. All the uh, innovation we bring on board, you know, changing the norms, uh, creating more transparency, creating more consensus, you know, the community are, are the owner of credit to see, not Dr. Sami. I'm not, I, I may be one of the major players, but we'll fine tune, we'll dictate our pace are the community, you understand? So I, I believe the coming months, the coming days is really going to be interesting for credit to see. I, I, I will not be surprised if this innovation is actually going to go to folks uh, by the end of the year. Thank you. No, oh, that's great. I mean, that's that's quite some information, and uh, I think listening to you, every all of the viewers must have started checking Credit to C website as to how can we can buy more of Credit to C tokens on uh, <laughs> the pre-sale. <laughs> that must have been the case because it's quite a vision. I mean, I have been a supporter of the thing that there are two things to the Web three industry when we talk about one word that is tokenomics. It is segregated into two. One is token and one is economics. So most of the people just talk about the token and they forget about the economics behind that. And that is what you have very, very clearly and specifically listed here as to what economics will be driving the Credit2C project. And that is the key to success of any project, I must say.
So I must congratulate you on that, Dr. Sami, that you have built quite a beautiful ecosystem here and envisioned a lot of it. So that that's pretty okay and that's pretty good. I mean, in a way, I'm happy about the project. But one thing that still keeps me uh, going about the project is that this is the future that you're talking about in the short term. So if our viewers, if our listeners, uh, I think we have lost Dr. Sammy again. Ah, network. Yeah, network issues sometimes in Nigeria. Yeah, it's a, it's a challenge sometimes, but he will be. He will come back. He will come back. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Said is uh, from India. Is trying to get in. Is he in the waiting room? He also has challenges with his. Uh, but they have uh, more challenges. Yes, with 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 the power, not with the internet. Mm. Yeah. No, no. I don't think there's any challenge. I mean, I am sitting at India, and network and power are absolutely fine. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Said has a, a lot of problems there. He's the in Said Delhi. He's in Delhi. Okay, I don't Said, know how uh, Delhi is doing. Yeah. <laughs> Delhi, the temperature is a problem right now, not the power. Yes. <laughs> Said, are you able to listen to me? Can you hear us, Mr. Said? No, I think. Your mo mic is off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, Dr. Sammy back again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we were just we were just talking about the story behind the tokenomics, and also I wanted to understand that this is a thing that you have planned for 2023-24. Going forward, what will be the case? So right now, uh, what pointers I could understand kept me interested in the project, but there has to be a long-term vision, a branch out of how the project is going to look like, say in 2030. Right. What is your vision about the future of the project beyond scaling up the milestones that you've already told us? What is beyond that? What is beyond 25? Yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier on that uh, we had a deal. We have actually signed a deal in United Arab Emirates, 31 years deal for Kratz Luxury Lifestyle. Uh, we had our, our legal team based in United Arab Emirates. We've done our intellectual property uh, we've done our valuation, uh, intellectual property covering 181 countries globally. Um, I think this uh, is one of the good things that's coming out now in the crypto space that the innovators right now are protecting their ideology, their intellectuality. Uh, we also have our valuation above $160 million uh, done by London Rates IP Valuation Office in London, UK. Uh, so we, we already see the vision, uh, we already see 20, 30 years uh, mapping it in our roadmap, uh, you know, when we're talking about credit to see decentralized autonomous market. We want to coordinate the space very well, comfortably, you know, uh, ensuring we'll be able to partner with manufacturers in their own niche, in their own industry. When we're talking about the e-commerce space we want to actually partner with more uh manufacturer more producers where their produce can get directly to the end user you know removing the bureaucracy in the middle for retailers uh we also looking at the real estate uh sector uh our portal will be similar to ema of united arab emirates where rectors can be able to actually sell their properties for residential purpose or for commercial purpose. And you can be able to actually complete the transaction using our native coin. So these are bigger roadmap we're talking about. I will talk, also talk about the, the, I've mentioned that we have 31 years deal already before we even try to launch our blockchain. We already have this deal and it's right now we're using it. When I go to UAE, I use that service. You know, I take my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner, free of charge, you know, because I'm using that facility, you know. So that portal is going live uh, end of this year. Last quarter of 2024 is going live. But if you have to use that portal, you need to use our own native coin as a settlement, you know, to complete transaction on that portal. So uh, the, the, the uh, Madam Kat said it's, it's a monster. Credit to say it's a monster, truly. Really. And I, I do not think we can finish this in five years. Uh, I, I believe... We're only scratching the surface right now. But going forward in two, three years to come, 
uh, and launching those portals, we'll be able to actually have a direction and uh, opening up doors for the roadmap. That's great. That's great. So uh, now the question arises, I mean, somebody from the legal side, since you are talking about a multinational, uh, multicultural identity in the form of CRAD D2C. So somebody from the legal team, how can they answer this that if we are going for cross-border trade in the decentralized ecosystem, how do you see the Web2 or the regulatory mechanism coming forward and helping that actually? Because that has been a concern. So when you talk about the the normal ecosystem, the Web2 ecosystem, there is a lot of uh, government uh, regulation. There's a channel. There's a banking channel with, with which you transfer the money. But in Web3 ecosystem, the things change totally. So it is totally decentralized. So if somebody wants to buy something sitting at maybe UK and the material is procured from, let us say, Nigeria, so the, some supplier from Nigeria will be able to sell the material to somebody in UK. How are these things going to work out in a uh, Web3 ecosystem? I mean, that that is what I have been thinking of. And especially when the CRAD B2C team is here, I see yeah. that you want the right people to answer that because you actually have thought of an ecosystem like that. I can only think of it. You have made it, actually. So how, how will it go forward? <clears throat> yeah, you can hear me. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry for being a bit late, uh, running into meetings, lots of things. Uh, you, have, you ask a very nice question, uh, although there is no answer and there has been none for a very long time. In the system that we all would like to see probably, uh, it's crucial if there is uh, all of the players that are involved in a transaction scheme have the same rules and it doesn't matter blockchain it or swift or anything else web web3 itself it does not demolish the the boundaries that we have as a financial system and we all can dream about ease of transaction and purchasing things from other places but unless it's accepted on the g9 level we can only speculate we can only guess and everything the on on the hand on the side of the um credit to see is uh, probably you already understood that uh, dr sam is a visionary and uh, he even before meeting with us um almost a year ago he had understanding about the very importance of the intellectual property involved in the uh tech project tech related project and uh, when we combined the the expertise on our end and on his end we managed to uh, do quite extraordinary thing because we protected the very idea the very technology of what credit to see is about and uh, this is where I will stop because I don't want to you know just uh, blah blah about potential of uh, regulation and cross-border transactions because this is not coming soon anytime soon unless there is a change in uh, USA uh, because well everything comes from there let's be honest at least most of the things um, credit to see is probably one of the most unique projects not because I love it or or I'm a fan of it not because the work that has been delivered by our our expert team by the intellectual intellectual property lawyers is extraordinary it's it's unique and there's very few projects in in the in the crypto space that actually has done something like this and credit to see is one of them because they did protect the very idea the very the, the technology itself so-called work of science so work of science is uh, it's the essence of any tech related project. And that's what they did. That's what they did. And this is where my uh, field of expertise will stop regarding your question, because um, I don't think people would love to, you know, hear my thoughts that 99% out of 100 will never exist in real life. But I can say something about credit to see because we did manage to protect 
everything that there was and there is this kind of let's put it this way this kind of like thick file um with over i think it's around 100 pages of what the blockchain itself is all about and it's protected in 80 in 181 countries show me another project that has done this so this is this this is my answer this is what i was i was about to say um at the beginning unfortunately i couldn't make it so i will do it now and um yeah this is this is it i mean this is this is right the first thing that the any any founder or any ceo can still is the unshattered un uh, what you can say unshakable faith in your vision that actually drives any project forward even if there are some glitches even if there are some technical problems or maybe other problems but the unshakable faith of the team can actually drive a project to success with all that because nobody is perfect i mean telling you even in the utopian world nobody is nobody is perfect so no project is but if the faith is there that definitely can make it better and can make it unique so that is what gratitude uh, is all about i can see and that's what keep us driving so i mean i would say i have been very happy hosting you all listening to all the diverse views and i mean things of i mean uh, i must say a star studies session with all the experts coming forward sharing their own views and surprisingly no view was common no view was the same resonance of the same thought process so this shows that the team is actually uh, diverse they have their own thinking process they have not lost their uh, say intellectual capability they are actually using it positively to align to the success of the project and that is what any good team looks like so for viewers this is grad d2c for you a very dynamic team bright team working towards success of course i mean the project we all can see is yet to make wonders happen in the times to come any closing remarks before yeah. dr anybody else if he wants to make any closing remarks those dr sammy will come last okay thank you <laughs> can i add something um you're absolutely right no uh, no project is perfect um there's no ut utopia that's true and we learn or, along the way um and the feedback of the community is very important yes that is very important so we're open for a lot of feedback i mean we're building it for the community so the community has to communicate with us to let us know what they need what they want what they're looking for how we can simplify everything how we can make life easier so yes we're open for a lot of feedback we're uh, gladly uh, uh yeah building on the feedback of the community absolutely mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, that's the most important that our community is happy and that we serve the community yeah mm -hmm. yeah let me say also something what i've seen already is when i started joining and when i see where we are today what we have already accomplished together as a team with the effort of all the people here in the team and also thank, uh, thankfully also due to the community is amazing. And I'm looking forward in the coming weeks and months and 24 will be the year that Credit C will really leave the harbor and looking forward in the coming years to see where we'll be. So as Madame Kat says and the whole team here present is uh, jump on on board and all feedback is uh, certainly welcome and looking forward to build something beautiful that will change and uh, hopefully for the better uh, do something positive for the, the 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 whole project and also the change in the crypto space so this is my ending word so thank you okay what i want to say is um maybe a little bit different but um i'm also different the point is that the, the, point, the, point, the, point, the point is that um, sometimes in your life one thing passed your way and you see it and you grab it off you let it go. And when you have the opportunity to see something like this and to see something what give you an opportunity to change lifestyles, to change uh, payment systems, to change 
um, happiness from people to change security of the life in people's life. And when you have all these things together in one community, what you can create now, then I can say that is now the time, like you say, you are corn gathered to grab it. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, this is why you must grab it now, like you have seen it also, that you must grab it and that you be a person, um, Mr. Sudip, who have also seen that you want to give it to your community. Because you have seen also what it can do in your community. And it is not only what we see, but it is now, the point is coming now, what other people see. And when other people like you see it, what is happening here now in this moment, then it is only the smart people, they go grab it or let it go. And this is why we are staying a team now, but we work together, but we have all the desire to grab it together and work together in this and bring it out to the world step by step by step. But I can say to you and to everybody uh, who is listening now to this meeting, if you have a chance in your life, do it before it is too late. Grab it now. That's, that's yeah. beautiful. Professor Kishin, thank you so much. So now I'll come to Dr. Sami. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Sodip. And uh, Ambassador Kristen, Professor Kristen, Madam Kat, and uh, my colleague, my good partner, um, Head of Business Development, Mr. Charles, I've said it all. Um, we have so unique team unique in, in our diverse, you know, different country, different region coming together for one project. Uh, and that's why we call it the monster. And the monster is still at the pre-ICU right now. The value is just 18 cents. And we are, end, we are ending that pre-ICU next month. Approximately during the Valentine Day, you know, we'll be ending the, the pre-ICU likely. And we'll now go to the ICU itself. And the fortunate thing now is that the price the 18 cents, while the ICO price is at 30 cents. Our listing value, our listing price is 80 cents. And we're open to actually list credit to see after launching the blockchain by June, July uh, on first and second tier exchange at 80 cents. Uh, we have already mapped out our strategy with our uh, ma uh, uh, market maker team, MM teams. And uh, I told you earlier on that we're looking at getting to a 50 position in coin market cap before the end of the year. So just like what Professor Kristen said, guys need to grab it at this particular moment that we are still at the pre ICU stage. Uh, the value of what we are hunting for is limited, but when we go to the ICU itself, it become more and we also open to venture capitalists angel investors family offices right now to partner with us uh we cannot afford to miss this opportunity to launch our portals uh, two portals at the last quarter of 2024 and another two portals uh in 2025 so you guys can reach us on our website uh, credit2claunch.pro and you can also reach out reach out to the team Remember, I told you that we have four niche of our unique portals. We have the credit to see e-commerce trading portals that are actually looking at, you know, tapping in uh, 1% from about $2 trillion, uh, $2 trillion market capitalization. We are looking at the real estate as well. That's actually having about uh, uh, $2.5 trillion market capitalization. We are looking at about the tourism market as well, $13.2 trillion, just to actually get 0.1% in that market. And we're looking at the payment system as well. So these are four market portals. And you should know that the settlement point for these four market portals is credit to see native coin. We are launching our blockchain June, July, a DPoS blockchain that has four major players, the validator, the delegator, a light backer, and tubo backer. These are the consensus players in our ecosystem. I'm very sure we're going to come here again uh, to CoinGaba 
uh, uh, AMA, and uh, we by that time maybe we'll be talking about our ICO in proper. So, guys, a wonderful time to have you all, and uh, let's create uh, uniqueness. Let's create more use cases for the world, and let's change the world for the better. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Samit. Thank you so much, everybody in the team. It was great having you all here. And uh, it is great. I mean, there are a few projects. I must personally say, you can see my earlier sessions also, which are available in recording. There are a few projects that actually see a store of value. And I must say, tell you, all the viewers that Gratitude see is definitely building one. So the store of value is one thing that you should look forward to if you are in the Web3 world. And that is what we should all be hunting. So the, to the investors, to the people who are using the Web3 ecosystem, and to everybody who is there in the Web3 community, here is Gratitude see for you, explained in detail and in all elaborate mechanisms. And that is what is driving us to the ecosystem. Let us build Web3 together and let us build crypto together. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And also a big hi to the little one behind. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hello. That, that's guys at the end of the session. Okay. That's Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for being there. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Sandeep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.